Well, hello again. Welcome back. So my lineup looks a little bit different here. I have moved it around, prioritized it a little bit. Some stuff is more important than others. I'll explain that, what I mean there. So we have a cub leaf blower that won't start. That's coming up soon. I'm not sure if it'll make it to video, but we'll see. I have a 271 for service. 461 with tensioner issues. That's coming up in the next day. A 261 for service. A 170 that hit something. 271 that doesn't run well. Uh, 250C with a tensioner issue. A 170 that hasn't ran in years. We've got a hedge trimmer with a broken pull start. I think that's why that's here. This is interesting. A Husky 262 XP. It was given to him for free. He knows nothing about it. He wants me to tell him all about it. And then I've got three more back here. You guys have seen these in my lineup. 036, an Echo, and an 028. These, there's absolutely no rush on. The people who own them are in no rush. They just want a video made. I will get to them, but some stuff is more important than others. So uh, right now, grab something quick here. Um, let's go with the 261. It's just here for service, I'm told. That shouldn't take us too long. Oh, good morning. Welcome back to my workbench. It's early on a Wednesday morning here. You'll have to ignore what's going on behind me. This area in the past has been a place where we keep some used parts, some hardware, some of this, some of that. Kind of a mess. But I have kind of taken over this area as my filming workbench. And it's, since it seems that you guys might stick around for a while, I'm going to clean this area up, make it a bit more tidy, make it more comfortable. I'll probably bring my coffee maker over closer to me. And my husband said, maybe we'll set up a cod over here. I can grab the odd nap if I need one, maybe stick around longer at night, fix a few more chainsaws. We'll see what happens. So today on my workbench, we have this steel MS-261. I sold this chainsaw brand new in March of 2019. This is the first time I've seen it since I sold it. So the customer dropped this off and said, service it and check out the bar and chain. So currently this saw is hooked up to life support. He's got three cords going to him. In the past, I have We've talked about Mtronic chainsaws, and I've read you some data off of some of the saws. So when I hook a, hook a chainsaw up, this is what I'm doing, and this computer is reading off of this. So what the computer is telling me about this chainsaw is that it has successfully started 1,586 times, and this chainsaw has ran for 112 hours, 32 minutes, and 53 seconds. It doesn't tell me a whole lot more than that, other than it, it doesn't detect any issues with it. So um, we are going to service the saw today, check out the barn chain. It looks like he sharpens his chain, but it looks like the rakers have never been touched. Um, the recoil, the little fins are completely packed with, with dirt and sawdust and stuff. So we're gonna clean this thing up really well um, service it and you guys can come along with me before we get started I just want to ask if you enjoy my channel if you find any value in it or maybe you just find it entertaining please click the subscribe button it doesn't cost you anything and it tells me that you like what you're seeing and that you want to see more if you like this I will keep doing it well let's get started here the first thing I want to show you 
is this recoil and just how plugged up this thing is. So your chainsaw draws in its fresh air through the fins on this recoil. Your flywheel's behind there turning and drawing fresh air in for cooling. This is especially bad on these modern high revving chainsaws. These saws need fresh air. So this is, this is not good. When your recoil is packed like this, you combine this with maybe some poor fuel quality, throw in a dull chain, and you have yourself a recipe for having to buy yourself a brand new chainsaw. I can link the recipe down below for how to burn up your chainsaw in under two hours. Okay, so we have some dirty, stinky, I don't know what that is. It's not moto mix. Maybe pump fuel, it's not mixed properly. Oh, the smell of that is, hmm. Okay, and lots of, I mean, there is dirt in that. We've seen worse. Have a look in the tank here. Now, all the dirt came out in the fuel. The tank is clean inside. It's a mystery substance. So color-wise, I don't know. I just looked back through invoices, and he has bought still two-cycle mix from us. But here's what still, like, our stuff looks like and his. So there's a, I don't know if this is old. I have seen, fuel does change color sometimes when it sits. Maybe the saw has been sitting unused for a long time. It's hard to say, but you can see there's a, a color difference there. That little bit of dirt was in this container. I just put a little bit of fuel in it to show you the color. Let's pull the fuel filter out of this. We'll put a new one in it while we're here. Okay, so a clean tank, a new fuel filter, and we'll be putting fresh fuel in this. When these Mtronic saws first started coming out, they came from the factory with these white fuel filters in them. But it was discovered that these white fuel filters were letting microscopic dirt by, and it was causing a problem in the Mtronic chainsaws. Not in the non-Mtronics, but in these Mtronics. So then they came out with this filter, this orange one, and now the Mtronic saws come with this in it. We just took an orange filter out of this. I have seen these filters. They get easily plugged up because they're so fine. It's a good idea to change these regularly, at least once a year. I would go to your steel dealer and get this. I would not buy aftermarket. Some things aftermarket are okay. This is not something that's okay. So these orange filters, there is the part number from steel. So if you have an Mtronic chainsaw at home and it still has this white filter in it, I would go grab yourself the new orange one or a couple of them so you have one on hand and you wanna keep these replaced and clean. So whether you have a non mtronic saw or an mtronic saw at home, you can run this filter in it. Those big white filters I just showed you, I don't think they actually sell those anymore. Here's the filter I took out of the saw, and here's a brand new one. If I suck air through these, this one is actually harder to suck air through. This one sucks through easily. So this filter may have a be blocked a bit. Put some fresh mix in this. We'll take a look in at the bar oil. 
You want to try to prevent getting dirt in there if you can. There's lots of oil in there. And it looks pretty clean. I can see right to the bottom of the tank. Let's pop over to the door and fire this thing up for a second. The customer didn't mention any running issues, but we've all done this enough times to know how this goes. So I want to hear it run, and then we will start cleaning this thing up and servicing it. I'm going to obviously be starting it on my fuel because I don't like the looks or the smell of his. Okay, I'll see you over at the door. starting the way it should. I'm going to use my foot to hold the throttle open. Okay, so you've seen this thing fire up for me, but then I had a hard time restarting it, and I had to use my foot to hold the throttle open to get it fired back up. So I came back in and I opened up the MDG results again to examine them a little bit closer. And the high speed fuel delivery is on the lean side, which indicates that the saw is holding fuel back. I just gave the Steel Tech Department in Canada here a phone call. I was just curious about a couple things. So with the serial number off the saw, he was able to confirm that this saw from the factory came out with a white fuel filter in it. So that means that somebody has changed this out for an orange filter at some point. Why were they having a running issue and changed the fuel filter? Whatever the reason was, it wasn't mentioned when the saw was dropped off. He also confirmed what I said earlier about those old white fuel filters allowing fine particles through. So those filters would allow fine particles to get into the fuel solenoid, and those fuel solenoids do not tolerate any kind of dirt. Here's what uh, the fuel solenoid looks like. So sometimes they're white, sometimes they're black, sometimes they're green. But this gives you an idea what it looks like. They are inexpensive. Depending on which one you need, sometimes you can you just buy them individually, or you can buy them in a kit that comes with the orange fuel filter. So I'm going to show you which one this saw has, and we're going to change it together. I'll show you how easy it is. So if the owner was having an issue with the saw running and he changed the weight filter out for the orange filter, that fuel solenoid should have been changed at the same time because it and that fuel filter go hand in hand. I'm going to zoom in here and show you the fuel solenoid on your saw. So, right behind the air filter, I'm going to point and touch it. It's that black plastic that I'm touching there. That's your fuel solenoid. So you could look at your saw. You might find a black one. You might find a green one. Or you might find a white one. This is the black original solenoid that would have came on the saw from the factory. If you're upgrading from the original black, you'll go to a green one. So that's, that's the green solenoid part number. 
You can't buy this in a kit. You go buy your solenoid and you would get a new orange filter. These two should go hand in hand. If you go to your saw and you find a white solenoid and you're gonna replace it, you're gonna replace it with a white one again. The white one comes, you can buy just it, or you can buy it in a kit that includes a new orange fuel filter. So this is the service kit. So we are going to replace this original black one with the new green one. We'll do it together. I'll show you how easy it is to do. I'm kind of curious if I were to take this black one off and say throw the white one on by accident, I wonder what would happen. I should call him back and ask him that. I'll do that right now. That's why he's there, right? So before we do anything, we're going to pull the bar and chain off this. I'm going to pull the recoil off this. We're going to get the saw all cleaned up and then we'll get to it. This 261 has captive bar nuts. Bar nuts stay with it. It's a nice feature. Okay. Let's take this recoil off. Yeah, that's, that's really dirty. We're going to get this all cleaned up. So your chainsaw wants to have airflow. It doesn't want to have insulation. And that's what... That's what all of this is, is insulation. The sawdust and the bar oil just act like an insulator. So we're gonna get this all cleaned up. We'll take this apart. Get this all cleaned up. That's be really interfering with airflow. So this inside piece of this recoil comes out to make it easier to clean. That's, that's a mess. I'm going to take all of this over to the door. I'm going to spray it down with a degreaser and get this cleaned up and I'll be back. Hey, I'm back here with all my cleaned up bits and pieces. Sometimes it takes longer to clean these saws up than it does to actually fix a saw, especially when the saws are never clean. They come in caked like this one was. This was a huge mess. We're going to pull this air filter off, pull that spark plug out. He's getting a new air filter. That's his request. He'll get his old one back. And we're gonna pull this spark plug out. Since we're already here, take a quick look down the hole. So there's a carbon buildup on top of the piston. Some oil running down the cylinder walls. It's been running too rich. I'll put a new spark plug in it. BPMR7A NGK. Gapped properly. Let's go ahead and remove the fuel solenoid. So we've got a few things, a few steps here to get this out. Step one, you see that screw at the end of my pointer? We've got to remove that. And then we're going to unplug here, unplug here, and then we'll pull this out.
we'll go ahead now and install the new one. So this is the part number for the green one that replaces black if you take a black one out. So in here they give us a little picture diagram and there it is in a sealed bag. You want to leave this sealed in the bag right until the, the minute you're going to install it. Here's what they give us for instructions. Some pictures of what to do and what not to do. Don't put your fingers over it and put it in straight. You don't want to put it on an angle. So what you don't want to be touching, you don't want to be putting your fingers. I'm just going to hold it with tweezers and put it in. Less chance of contamination. So that screw is back in. And we'll plug our wires back in. I'm going to be very carefully handling these. You don't pull on the wires. Okay, so that one's back. There you go. Yeah, that was easy, wasn't it? Remember that Cub Cadet leaf blower that was in my repair lineup? Here it is. Rotten fuel. Rotten fuel lines. Replace the fuel line. Fresh fuel. It's back up and running. It's leaving. There will not be a video on that one, but there's your update. We are on the home stretch here. We're going to put a new air filter on this. We'll put the recoil back on. I don't mind taking some hardware out with my impact, but I prefer to put it back in by hand. And then I can feel it that I'm not cross-threading it. Let's go ahead and take this all off. We're going to grease the clutch bearing and we're going to replace this rim sprocket. That's not supposed to be on there. That's like bale or twine or something all wound up on there. Clutch bearing. The clutch springs look good. Everything's tight. I'll get this all cleaned out as well. I'm going to pop over to the door, get all this stuff cleaned up. I'll be right back. I've got all my parts and pieces cleaned up and we'll put this thing back together.
bearing's been greased. We'll put a new rim sprocket on. Hey, let's finish up here and we will pull the spark arrestor out and have a look at it. Pull this out and have a peek at it. And that spark arrestor is clean. Okay, the owner of the saw has called in and asked for a new 16 inch barn chain to be installed. And he'll take his old barn chain back as spares for when he's trenching. So he's gonna get this bar and this chain to match. 325, 50 gauge, 67 drive link. So we'll go ahead and install these. Being this is a new bar and chain, he will have to retention this after he starts using it. We have done a full service of this 261. We have replaced the fuel solenoid. We're going to take this thing outside, fire it up, make sure everything is good. I'll see you outside the door. So this steel MS-261 runs good, starts and runs good. It's oiling well. Um, it was dropped off for a service and a brand new bar and chain. So we have replaced the bar and chain and he'll get his old bar and chain back. We've replaced the air filter, the fuel filter and the spark plug all at his request. He can have these back if he wants them. We also replaced the fuel solenoid, upgraded from the black one to the green one and replace his worn rim sprocket while we were at it. We drained out of the tank some questionable, dirty, stinky fuel. So he's leaving with a clean tank and fresh fuel. So I think this chainsaw is ready to go back out and do some firewood cutting. So when you replace a fuel solenoid on a chainsaw, they require recalibration afterwards. That depends on what saw it is and what version the saw is. We can discuss this more in another video. So this saw has been recalibrated and is ready to go. So I have a whole line of saws waiting for me. I'm gonna go make a great big cup of coffee and get back to it. Thank you so much for watching.